Hello and welcome back to Let's Develop Code Hunt. In this episode I'm going to start with Sector 4 uh, Conditionals. So let's jump right into it with the first task. We have a code fragment that receives two boolean values and returns a boolean value. And from the tests I see that if both parameters are false, the expected return value is false. If the first parameter is false and the second is true, then the output is expected to be true. The interesting thing is I have no clue what these numbers actually mean, but uh, Maybe I'll figure it out on the way. So my first guess would be that this is just an OR. And we will find out if this is in fact the right solution. It is. And it is the most elegant solution. So we can just proceed to the second task. That was easy. So next, same setup. True and true is supposed to be true. False and false is supposed to be true. So probably, no, it's supposed to be false. Sorry, false and false is supposed to be false. So just a wild guess, this could be an end. Because it's probably not an or anymore. And I guessed right. That was quite easy. Next one we're going to get in an integer value and are supposed to return a bool. And from the test it says that for 100 we should return false and for 0 we should return true. So my first guess would be to just check for equality with zero. That's not the case. In fact, we're supposed to return true also for an input value of four. So maybe we check if x is actually smaller than five. Let's see what happens. 36 is supposed to return true, so maybe the board is 37. Um, so 37 is not, so maybe it's 38. Probably it's something like 50 or even a, a 100. Maybe it's a 100 because it's generating me the, the 100 test case. No, it's not. So maybe it's... Uh, something between 89 and 37 so I'm going to try 50 just because yeah just because okay let's continue to the next task let's see this time we get in two integer values and have to return a boolean and for 0 and 0 we have to return false and for 34 and 35 we have to return true so this could be an x smaller y check just a wild guess but a correct guess these are quite easy yet maybe there's something more complicated to come out of it uh, so now we get in an integer and we're supposed to return an integer and this integer, this is probably the sign. Um, so it's minus one for negative numbers, plus one for positive numbers, and zero for zero. So if i equals zero, return zero, else if i smaller zero, return minus one, else return one. Not really nicely written, but correct. 
only that we don't get the full skill rating for this task so I'm going to uh, keep trying here so there's got there's got to be something something better to express this condition of course I could use the signum function of the of the math class which is probably uh, I guess it's like that and it should have the right signature but that's kind of cheated isn't it it's not really it's not really conditionals so maybe maybe I have another idea let me just think about it for a second so we have to return three different values if we do just divide the number by itself it's not going to work so three conditionals is not nice hmm. actually I have no better idea how to express this with conditionals uh, in a shorter expression than uh, what I typed in before what I could try is something like if i smaller than 0 return minus 1 if i bigger 0 return 1 else return 0 but that's probably also only giving me oh no that's actually giving me full skill points interesting so again this is a proof that the skill rating is not only based on the length but on some other metrics unfortunately they're not specified anyways um, let's continue to the next task again we get in two integer values and we're supposed to return a boolean and the expected result for 29 and 1021 is false so just a wild guess this could be an unequals relation but it's not ah an equals relation I'm sorry that was uh, yeah just stupid and it is in fact interesting while well, guessing brings us uh, further along in this uh, in this section in this sector actually I already finished six tasks I think this is my record for the last uh, six or seven episodes so uh, let me hope I'll keep going like that now we get in an integer and are supposed to return an integer which is interesting 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 my result is always one so if I smaller than 50 maybe return 2 else return 3 maybe just the simplest possible solution to fix the test cases we've just seen but actually for the uh, the 50 the border is wrong so let me try 100 maybe that'll work and actually that's a correct solution and a skilled solution but this time I'm going to try the ternary operator again because I really think for such a small thing it makes sense to use it because it makes the code a lot shorter but after the experience in the last task I'm actually not entirely sure whether we will get the full skill rating for this solution but this time we'll get it so uh, it seems Microsoft is on my side regarding the readability of this 
solution. Let's continue. What else have we got? So we get in an integer and have to return the string even or odd. This is in fact kind of simple. So we say uh, if i modulo 2 is 0, then we have an even number, even, and if not, we have odd numbers. And that's the solution. Okay, so let's continue from here. Is there another task? Yes, there is another task. So we're supposed to tell our caller whether we are a multiple of five, which is actually the same schema. So if i modulo five equals zero, then we are a multiple of five. Otherwise, we are not a multiple of five. Yeehaw! It's actually quite easy to uh, to solve these tasks, and it seems even quite easy to get the full skill points. And uh, referring to my last episode where I compared uh, C Sharp and Java solutions for this task, this might actually be because probably in C Sharp I would use the or produce the exact same uh, the exact same results, the exact same solutions. Sorry. Uh, as I'm doing here because it's the shortest way to write these things. Anyways, for our next task we get in two integers and we're supposed to return a string um, which is actually multiple of one not a multiple of two so this time we're going to check whether x mod i modulo x equals zero and in in the first uh, if this is zero we're going to return multiple of string and in the other case we're going to return not a multiple of string i'm going to write it this way so only the prefix is added let's see what the Microsoft skill ratings thinks of that solution. No, but it's actually not. Uh, okay, I'm missing a space here. And it takes it for a valid and skilled solution. So thanks for the compliment, Microsoft. Let's go on. Tenth task. Actually, I didn't look at the number of tasks uh, in the fourth sector, but I think there's not more than 15 tasks, so there's actually quite a chance that I finish them in this one episode. Let's see. This time I get in three integer values and I'm supposed to return a string, which is either yes, exclamation mark, or no. And... Four two one is yes, whereas one two one is no. Um, if I smaller j return no, else return yes. Don't know, probably not the right solution yet, but from the test cases I've seen. Uh, I could not, maybe it's the sum of them. If i is smaller, uh, smaller or equal, that's probably still not it because I'm not considering k at all. Um, i smaller equal j or j smaller equal k 
maybe just trying to guess hmm okay maybe I was too loud uh, saying that I will finish the remaining levels in this episode but uh, I'm going to keep trying for a bit this is the wrath of the Microsoft code hunt that hits the code hunter when he gets too uh, uh, much self-esteem so let's think about this we have three input values and there's a yes actually for exactly one case right here's a yes for exactly one case so maybe it's i equals 4 and j equals 2 and k equals 1. At least I would like to have another yes case. Uh, okay, I exactly flipped it around. But actually there's another case and now we can see... Uh, ah, no, no, okay, now I can see the schema. <laughs> The thing is that um, i divided by j should be equal to k, right? That's what we're looking for. Uh, in this case, we should return yes, so now it's exactly flipped. But oh, maybe it's not it yet. Two, four divided by two is not one. No, it's not it's not the right function, yes. Going to flip these real quick. So that's in fact not it, because this is one, so there's no division involved. Um but it's always that j is the half of i and k is the half of j. So maybe I'm just trying to do that to say I have two conditions. i divided by 2 is j and j divided by 2 is k. And this is going to return me yes, and in the other case, I'm going to have no. But that's actually not it either. Because 7 divided by 2 is 3.5, which should be cut off to 3. Ah, but it's supposed to be no. So. Either this should not be uh, integer division going on here, so we could cast this to a float. Do the same here. But this is probably too complicated. Come on, give me a test case, it doesn't pass. Oh, it actually captures it. Interesting. So I'm actually not quite sure how integer division in C Sharp works, but I'm quite confident that I would have to do the same casts in C Sharp in order to get this right, probably because it's translated in the background. So this is actually surprisingly complicated, but I got a full skill rating anyways. So let me have a quick look at the number of levels left in sector 4. Uh, okay, actually this is going to be the last level. So I'm going to finish this, hopefully, I'm going to try to finish this in this episode to have the whole sector covered and not have one of these small tiny episodes. So let's see. 
Um, I have one in integer input. I'm supposed to return one integer as an output. Um, it says the output is zero initially, and if the input is bigger than seven, then the output is uh, plus seven. So there's probably uh, another condition like that. If i is bigger than 14, then output plus equals 7. And if it's bigger than 21, maybe, then the output is plus equals 7 again. Just trying to guess patterns from what I see but actually for 15 it's already 21 so maybe I just say if it's bigger than oh, bigger than 14 just add 14 would solve this case Let's see what's the next case that's failing. Actually, there's no failing case. Uh, only the skill rating is not at its max yet. So I'm going to have to fix that. Let's see. Do I have to keep the original structure? Because, I mean, in that case, I cannot really improve that. I could just say if i bigger than 14 return 21 if i bigger than 7 return 7 else return 0 and see what's the skill rating i get for this solution this is actually full skill rating so I just decided to ignore the initial structure and make a shorter solution, which actually actually brings me to the full skill rating. Okay, this is it for now. And actually this concludes sector 4, which was a quite short sector, covered it in one episode. Well then, uh, if you liked this episode, please consider to subscribe to my channel and uh, also have a look at the other episodes, the other seasons uh, I'm doing. Um, and if you have any comments or feedback or ideas what else I could do, uh, just drop me a comment here or on my channel page. See you next time.